In this tutorial, we'll learn some of the basics of Adobe Photoshop. I've already got the program open here. I'm going to start a new file, and I'll just give you a brief introduction to some of the sections that you see on the screen. Let's go to File, New, Command N. And as a preset, I'll use the default Photoshop size, which happens to be 7 by 5 inches. And I'll just give this file a name. PS intro and I'll leave the rest of these settings the same it should be 7 by 5 inches at 72 pixels per inch and then click OK and that'll start us off with a blank file now you can see here in my file area I have a set of rulers running across the top and the side if I want to hide or show those you can go to my view pull down menu and simply pick rulers or as you can see command R on your keyboard. I'll go command R and bring them back up. Command R to disappear. If I want to draw guides on my page I can actually go up to my rulers, click inside the ruler and pull down. And you can see here that by pulling out from the ruler I can draw guides. And I'm setting these up at the one inch marks. Now if I want to get rid of them, I can just go across them, making sure I'm on my selection tool, and drag them back out. Let's go through some of the tools before we go any further. Here's our tool palette over here. The first four at the top are basically selection tools. This one with the black arrow is called the Move Tool. It is basically used for moving things around on layers. The one to the left of it is called the Marquee Tool. And if I click down on it, you can see there's a little black arrow in the bottom corner, which means there are other tools under it. If I click down on it and hold it, I also have the selection of the Elliptical Marquee Tool and two single row Marquee Tools for drawing one pixel lines up and down and left to right. You're rarely going to use these two but you will often use the elliptical and the rectangular marquee tools. The one just below that is known as the lasso tool. It is used for drawing freehand selections. These two tools are for designed for making selections which is to say isolating a specific area on a layer. Now I'll just show you the lasso tool if I just click and draw, draw it's just a freehand drawing tool and when I let go you can see the marquee flashing around my selection now to undo that selection it's called deselect and you can simply click in an area that has not been selected so therefore outside of this area I can click and deselect this other tool to the right of that is called the magic wand tool and what it does is when you click on a part of your image it selects similar pixels that is to say similar colors and you can set the parameters of how close or how far away from your original color that it will choose from. Below that we have the cropping tool which we won't get into today as well as a slice select tool which we won't get into because it is for creating files for internet usage. Beneath that we've got the healing brush tool which I'll get into in a later lesson the actual brush tool which is used for painting the clone stamp tool which is used for sampling a section of your image and repainting that section somewhere else and then here we have the history brush tool which allows you actually to paint towards an older version of your file below that we have the eraser which basically erases your image when you drag across it's like a paintbrush we have our gradient tool which allows us to paint gradations we've got our eyedropper or our blur tool which allows us to do subtle blurs and if I click on that you can see there's also a sharpen tool and a smudge tool which is almost like dragging your finger through wet paint like finger painting We'll leave it on the blur tool. This tool here is called the dodge tool. 
and if I click on it there's a burn tool and a sponge tool. These are primarily used for working on photographs. They're photographers tools. Below that I've got the text tool, the type tool. If I click on there you can see that I can also type vertically and type something known as a mask which lets you create an area that you can isolate stuff within those borders. Most of the time we'll simply use the horizontal type tool. The rest of these tools are vector drawing tools which we won't get into but if you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator they work the same way. We've got a pen tool, a path selection tool, and a line tool. Line tool. Now beneath those we've got the eyedropper tool for sampling colors, the hand tool for moving around your page, and the magnify or zoom tool for zooming in and zooming out. Now some of these just like in Adobe Illustrator we have some better shortcuts so we probably won't tend to use these tools but rather the shortcuts. Let's draw something in our page now. But first let's create a new layer to draw that in. You'll notice over here in my layers palette by default every file starts off with what is known as a background layer. It's an opaque layer and I want to create something that has some transparency so I'm going to create a new layer. I'll go down to the bottom of the layers palette. I'll go to the create new layer button which looks like a page icon. It's just to the left of the garbage can. I'll click on that and you notice a new layer appeared in my layers palette. Now you don't see anything on the screen because my layer is empty. But to highlight the layer you simply click on it on its icon and I'll highlight layer 1. I'll go to my rectangular marquee tool, select it, and I will draw a, a box inside of that layer. If I wanted to draw a perfect square I would hit my shift key. And you can see here with my shift key down it draws a perfect square without it down it just draws and follows your drag. So I'll draw a rectangle about this size. I want to fill it with the foreground color. You see here we have foreground and background. If I click on the background it brings up the color picker. If I click on the foreground it also brings up the color picker. Now to invert these colors I can simply click on the little double arrow. So anyway, let me click on the foreground color. Choose a different color. I'll choose a red. A little less intense. Click OK. Go to my edit pull down menu and choose fill. It will ask me if I want to fill the foreground color. By default, yes. My blending mode should be set to normal my opacity should be set to 100%. My preserved transparency should be unchecked. And I'll click OK. Now to deselect, I can simply click away from the marquee. And if I want to move this block around in the layer, I go to my Move tool, and I can simply drag that around. Now, you can see in my layers palette that I have these little eyes. They stand for visibility. I can turn off the visibility of any layer, including the background. Now, when you see this little gray checkerboard pattern, that represents transparency on your layer. So that means I can see through this layer where I see the checkerboard. So I'm still on layer one. I'm going to create another layer. I'll go down to my Create New Layer button, click on it. You see how it generated a new layer here. I'll go to my marquee tool, choose the elliptical marquee tool. And this time, instead of going to my color chips in the tool palette, I'll simply go to my swatches and pick a new color. And let's see, I'll pick a, a green here. And I'll draw a circle on top of this box. You can see again, it's an ellipse unless I hold my shift key down to make a perfect circle, which I'll do this time. Now I'll go Edit, Fill, OK. Now if I start to drag this around, if I move this around now while on the Marquee tool, I'm actually moving my Selection Marquee and not the item that it 
got filled with. So I can actually keep that circle intact, go over here and do another fill. If I want to move this with the marquee still selected, I need to go to my move tool and then grab it. And you can see it looks like scissors. It's telling me that it's actually cutting it out and moving it. And it's holding the marquee wrapped around it. So there is a major difference between your move tool and your marquee tool. The marquee represents the selection itself where the move tool actually moves the object on your layer. I can about go back to my marquee tool now and just click away to deselect. I'll go back again. I'll choose the rectangular marquee tool because I want to show you now how you can marquee around a set of pixels and delete them. So I'm selecting around these pixels. I'll do that again. Click and drag. And I'll simply go delete. Hit my delete key. And it deletes anything inside of that area. Now you notice the red box wasn't affected because it's on a different layer which is not highlighted right now. If I simply go to that red box and click on it in my layers palette, highlighting layer 1, move my marquee tool over a little, hit my delete key this time, you see how it actually deleted something off that layer. I'm going to go undo because I want to preserve that box. I'm going to make it, I'm going to deselect now by clicking outside of the selection area. One other thing I should do is I should go back to my layers here and name my layers by double clicking on the name. I'll call this one box and I'll double click on layer 2 and I'll call this circle. I'm going to save my file. File, save. And I'll just save this to my desktop. We'll still call it PS, intro.psd and save. Click OK. Now again go to my move tool depending which layer is highlighted I can move that layer around anything on that layer will move you can see here how the circle moves click on the box and the box moves now let's say I want to change the stacking order I want the circle to be behind the box I can simply go to my layers palette grab the layer and drag it in this case I'm dragging the box upwards and when I see the black line appear above the other layer, I let go. And now the box is in front of the circle. Again, I can drag it the other way and move it behind. There we go. Highlight the circle, layer, move it around. Now let's say these were meant as one unit, but I wanted to keep them on separate layers for editing purposes later. However, I want to move them together as a unit. Go back to my Layers palette. You see there's a little icon of a paintbrush. With the circle layer highlighted, I can click on that same box in any other layer, and it puts a little icon of a chain telling me that these two layers are linked. And now that they're linked, while I'm on the Move tool, when I drag it around the screen, they move together as a pair, as a group. I can unlink these at any time by simply clicking on that little chain icon and there we go, it's isolated on its own. The next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to draw just a random shape using the lasso tool. So let's create a new layer. I'll double click on it now and I'll call it lasso and hit my return key. Now let's pick another color. This time I'll pick an orange. Medium color orange. Go to my lasso tool. And draw a random shape. Now I'll go edit. Fill. OK. Now I'll deselect to look at that. I'll click outside. And I can zoom in by going Command plus and zoom out by Command minus rather than using the magnifying glass. Zoom in. And again, spacebar. In Photoshop, it's the spacebar, just like Illustrator, to move around your page when you're zoomed in. Okay, now I will zoom out, Command minus. 
Once again, zooming in, command plus, zooming, zooming out, command minus, moving around your page, space bar, and drag. I'm going to show you, I'm going to create yet another new layer, and I'll show you some of the aspects in, in our taskbar at the top with respect to our selection tools, our marquee tools. So yet another new layer, I'll double click on the name, I'll call this marquee. I'll pick an, a purple this time with my uh, swatches. Now with my rectangular marquee tool, I'll show you how you can add to your selection, subtract from your selection, as well as get the intersect point of two selections. And that has to do with these four little boxes up at the top in your taskbar. And you can see when I roll over, they tell you what they do. This is the original selection tool. And let me try that now. I'll make a box. Let's say I want to add another little component here. I could use my shift key, which is the shortcut. And you see a little plus sign up here. And it will add to the selection. I could use the option key, which you see a minus sign. And it deletes from the selection. You see how with my option key down, I'm cutting into my selection. You can do it manually up here as well by clicking on one of these. Now I don't need to hold any modifier keys. I can simply start to drag, add to the selection. You notice it doesn't actually have to be connected to the selection physically. I'm adding to the selection. This box here will subtract from the selection. Now if I drag in, it cuts away. It's like taking bytes out of it. I can even do a hole. And this one here does the intersection. So anywhere where they cross over, it will save. You see, there was just this crossover area it saved. I'm going to go Command-Z to undo. And let's say I went across all of this. It will save what's inside of that intersection. I will go Undo, Command-Z once again. Now, the big deal for me is to always go back and reset it to New Selection once I've done my selection. Now just to get fancy here, let's keep this highlighted. Let's go to our marquee tool and choose the elliptical. I'll go minus, subtract from selection, and I'll cut some circles out of this. And I can even go in there and make it look like bite marks. Okay, and again back to my new selection setting. So to see what I've got in this selection, I'll go Edit, Fill, click OK. And there we go, a uh, multifaceted selection using adding and subtracting features to create the selection. Now I'm going to deselect by clicking outside of that area while on the Marquee tool. I'm going to show you one other aspect of the selection tools. So let me create yet a new layer. Let's call this layer anti, actually we'll call it feathering, feathering. I'll leave my marquee tool on the ellipse. I want to point out at the top here again in our taskbar that we've got a feature called feather. That basically uh, dictates the softness of the edge of our line when we create a shape. Now the anti-alias does need to be checked for this. With anti-aliasing off you get no softness on rounded edges. And I'll actually zoom in here and show you. You see on these rounded edges there are pixels that are semi-transparent that show what's behind, the color behind in this case, to give you the illusion of a soft edge when it's at normal size. If I was to draw a circle with no anti-aliasing which I'll do now. I'll pick the color orange here. I'll turn off the anti-alias and I'll draw a circle right here and we'll fill it. Edit fill. Click OK. I'll deselect. Let's zoom in good and close. You'll notice that there's no in-between pixels to make it look smoother. That is what is called anti-aliasing. So this line here has anti-aliasing. This line here does not. I'm going to make sure I turn that back on. 
I'm going to zoom out. Command minus, command minus. I'm on my new layer. You always need to be aware of which layer is selected because whenever you draw, it will render itself on that particular layer. So I'm still on the feathering layer. I'm going to draw a bigger circle here, but before I do that, I'm going to set my feathering to 10. Hit my tab key. And now I'll draw a circle. And I'm holding my shift key down. And I go edit, fill. Okay. Now see how soft that is with a 10 pixel feathering. Now that's very soft. I'll go to original size. Zoom out to 100%. Let me try one with a 3 pixel anti-aliasing. Hit my tab key. I'll draw a circle down here. Shift key down. Edit fill. Okay. Now you can see how that's softer there. And again, I'll go to my move tool. You'll notice these three circles are on the one layer. Therefore, they can all drag together. If I wanted to move one element on the same layer, I actually need to go select it with my marquee tool. So I'll use my rectangular one. It seems to be the easiest to grab things. Drag well around it. Don't drag into it or you'll actually be cutting away from it. Drag well around it. Then hold your command key down. And you'll notice it'll make a pair of scissors with an arrow saying it's cutting that out. And then you can drag it around. I'll review that again. I'll deselect. If you have more than one object on a layer and you want to move one object separate from the others, go to your marquee tool, preferably the rectangle I would think. Make sure you drag well around it because if I drag just into it and use my command key, I'm actually cutting away because that's what this command does. But if I drag well around it, I just deselected there, well beyond its edges, then Apple or Command key down, click and drag, I can move that shape anywhere. Then I'll click away from it to deselect. Again, go to my Move tool if I want to move everything on that layer. I'll restack this just to review. I'll move the feathering behind the purple. You can see there it's poking behind the purple. I'm going to show you another thing that has to do with the layers and the transparency. Let's say I want to fill what I have here as purple. First I go to that layer, marquee. I can move it around. But let's say I want to fill just the area that's, that's opaque, which is the purple area. If I was to choose, let's choose another color here. I'll choose a light blue. I'm going to edit fill. It would actually fill my whole layer, which covers all the area. I'm going to go Command-Z to undo that. I want to just fill the area that's already filled in with purple. Go to my Layers palette. You see under the Lock tabs here, I can click on Lock Transparent Pixels for this layer. It's associated with this layer only. And now if I go Fill, anything that's transparent will remain transparent. Edit, Fill, OK. And you see what happened there? It filled only the opaque areas. I'll choose another color. I'll choose this magenta. Edit. Fill. OK. And there we go. It filled that area. I'm going to choose a lighter green. Edit. Fill. OK. Now this also holds true when you're painting with, let's say, the Gradient tool. I'm going to introduce you to the Gradient tool right now. With my layer locked, my layer opacity transparency locked, I can go to my Gradient tool. And you'll notice up in the taskbar, it's showing me it will go from the foreground color to the background color. It's basing it on these two colors. If I change these colors, it will change the gradation. So let me change that green to a yellow. I'll make it more intense. Okay. And you see how it's reflecting that there. Right next to it, you have the types of gradation. So we have linear, radial, an odd one here called angle, one that does it like tubes, reflected, and one that does it like a diamond. Again, typically you'll be using radial and linear the most. So just for fun, 
while we're on this marquee layer with this odd shape and our layer locked, let's apply a gradient and you simply click on where you want that first color to start and you drag it like an elastic until you want that last color to end. And you see what happened? It started on yellow, ended on the red. So if I drag it from the bottom, it shifts the colors in the opposite. Now if I want them to go straight up and down, I could hold my shift key to constrain it and it's straight up and down and the same for down to up corner to corner now this also works within a selection so let me create a new selection once again I'll create a new layer here first I'll call this one selection hit my return key I'll draw a new box on top here we'll change our colors I'll go from a uh, bright blue, click on the background color to a green and we'll go a bit darker on that green. Go to my gradient tool and because this is selected it will only draw within the boundaries of my selection. I'll go to my selection, my marquee tool, deselect. I'll draw a circle, let's go to ellipse draw a circle and I'm holding my shift key down I go back to my gradient tool this time I'll use the radial gradient and again this color will start where I click and then the green where I stop so I'm gonna say this is like a 3D ball I'll click about here and then drag to the bottom and it gives me this nice feathered looking 3D looking uh, sphere. Now remember my selection I had it set it to 3 pixels so if I go I'll deselect you see how it's got this nice soft edge. Let me go back change the feathering to 0 pixels but leave anti-aliasing on hit my return key. Draw a new circle try that gradient again and you'll see I'll get a sharp line this time. There we go and I'll deselect go to my mark key tool and deselect. Now we've taken on a lot here, but I'm going to show you one more special effect that has to do with objects on a layer. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to copy this ball up here by dragging well around it. Again, I use the ellipse, probably better to use the marquee uh, rectangle. But I, I highlight it around there, I'm going to go edit, copy, and when I go edit paste, it will paste it inside of a new layer. Now I can move this around so you can see I have a new sphere right here. And the trick I wanted to show you was how to apply a quick drop shadow to an object on a layer. Go up to your layer pull down menu, make sure that the particular layer is selected. Go up to layer, layer style, drop shadow. click on it. You'll notice there's a drop shadow now. You can affect the distance and the opacity and the softness down here. I can affect the size. I can affect the distance. I can also affect the angle. So let's just adjust this a bit. There we go. And click OK. I'll drag this up a bit here. There are other options. There are other layer styles, which we won't get into right now. But the drop shadow, a very commonly used style, I thought I'd show you. Now, if I move that around, the shadow follows it. You can do some very beautiful 3D effects just with using a couple of gradients, shadows, and various layers. So just to review, we learned the basics of using the marquee tools rectangular and elliptical for drawing as well as making selections as well as isolating areas to paint into. The move tool basically for moving layers around, things on layers. We quickly use the lasso tool for drawing a random hand-drawn shape. We actually didn't use the magic wand tool but it's for selecting similar pixels and maybe I'll quickly show you right now 
I'll highlight the box. I'll drag it to the top here in my layers. Now I'll go to my magic wand. If I click on the box, you'll see it select all the colors in the box. I'll deselect. The shortcut for deselecting is Command D. Now let me drag that back to the bottom here. We also learned how to use the gradient tool. And we did move our object around the page by using the space bar to drag. And we zoomed in using Command plus and Command minus to zoom out. As well, we learned actually on the marquee tool how to add to selections, subtract from selections. Now that's intro number one for Adobe Photoshop.